Hello and welcome to this session on JMeter beginner tutorial and today we are going to learn all about assertions in JMeter. So we will go very basic step by step and we will see what is assertion, how to add assertions in JMeter and different types of assertions we have in JMeter. So let's get started and assertions in JMeter are, so let me just increase the font so that you can see this clearly. So assertions are the validations that we do on in our tests in JMeter and you can also say these are the checks on the response. Now in JMeter you can do some checks on the request as well but at a very basic level we do assertions on response and these checks can be on the value, can be on the format, can be on the duration of the response uh, or can be on the size and so on. So these are some basic assertions that we have. So let's get started and go to JMeter and I have my JMeter running here and I'm using this test plan that we created in our earlier session where we have a single a simple thread group with a single request here. You can see this is an HTTP request and we have seen all these listeners in the earlier session. So I'm going to, I can delete these listeners or I can also disable them. I'm going to disable them because I will have this uh, project uploaded on GitHub so that I can give you a link and you can get this project. So I will for now just disable this and we are going to look at assertions. So we already have a test which is an HTTP request and here we have added a web page, uh, this particular page here and we can run this. So if I run this, you can see we, we, we are getting a response here. So now we are getting a response here, but we need to check some particular things in the response. So for that we add assertions. So we will do a right click on our thread group and we can actually add assertions and listeners at different levels. You can add it at a test plan level. So you can do a right click on the test plan and go to add and add the assertions or listeners or and other elements as well. You can do a right click at the thread group level and then again add these components like assertions and listeners. And then you can also add them at the request level. So you can do a right click on the request and then add uh, assertions here or also at listeners. Now the difference here is if you add at a request level that will only be applicable to that particular request. If you add at a thread group level it will be applicable to all the requests inside the thread group and when you add it at a test plan level it will be applicable to all the thread groups and all the requests inside the test plan. So for now I will go to the thread group level and go to add and go to assertions and the very first assertion I'm going to add is a response assertion. Okay, so response assertion is something we actually saw earlier in our, uh, when we had a session to create the very first test plan. And this is a very basic assertion on the response as the name suggests. And here, if you see, we have a section to apply to. So you can apply this assertion to main samples and sub samples, main sample only, sub samples only, and then we can use a variable here. And then we have fields to test. So you can apply this to text or to response code or to response message, response headers, request headers, and so on. And I'm going to use response code. And I will say pattern matching rules is equals and here I will add a pattern and I want to check that the response code is equal to 200 which is a successful HTTP request, a successful HTTP response code. And here I can clear and run this. So you can see this is in green that means we have got a successful response code and you can see we are getting 200 as the response code. Now just if I change this let me just make it to 201 and now if I clear this and run this again you will see this actually failed and if you expand this you can see the reason for failure is because our assertion failed we were expecting 201 but we re received 200 so that is the reason for failure and actually we can add a assertion listener 
so we have seen listeners in our listener session and there we have not seen assertion results listener so you can add this as well and this will particularly show us the assertion results so if I run this again you can see it only shows the assertion results here okay so that was response assertion so let me also write this down we have seen response assertion and the other assertion we can see is I will again do a right click and go to assertions and here we have a duration assertion so as the name suggests it will assert the duration and let me make it uh, take this up and yes so you can see it will assert the duration and if I see the duration we are getting as of now is somewhere around 876 milliseconds so what I will do is uh, let me make this as 3 so the request runs 3 times and in the duration assertion I say so this is in milliseconds okay so you have to give the duration in millisecond I say it is uh, let us say 865 so anything below 865 will be pass and anything above 865 will be fail so 865 and below will be pass okay so now if I clear this and run this again and let me first uh, make this back to 200 so we do not get any failure because of response session and now I will save and run this again and let us just see and yes we are getting the failures because of duration assertion and it's it's saying it the operation lasted too long it took 3205 milliseconds but it should not have lasted for longer than 6, 865 milliseconds so actually it is taking a lot a uh, lot longer now it is taking somewhere uh, 3000 milliseconds so if I make this as 3000 and run this again So actually it passed this time and you can see everything is passed and because every hour time is less than 3000 milliseconds. So this is very random but that is okay. We know about duration assertion. So let me also write this down duration and then let us see a uh, different assertion. So we can see here we have the size assertion so as the name suggests we are asserting the size and of course here we can apply it to different samples and then we can select what is the response size field to test full response only response header response body and so on and then the size in bytes and then we have type of comparison here okay so let me just see what is the response uh, size we are getting as of now we are getting somewhere around 50,200 so I will say I will take this up and I will say 50,230 uh, let us say 230 and I will say anything uh, type of comparison is less than or equal to so anything less than equal to this should pass otherwise it should fail and I will clear the results and run this again and yes we have the failures and of course it is because of size so you can see uh, we are getting size of 236 bytes but we are comparing with 250-230 and I think this is the same here as well and here even duration accession failed and size accession also failed so this is how we can have the size accession so let me actually make it greater than or equal to and here we have checked the size and then some other assertion let me again do a right click add assertion and then we have these other different assertions so json assertion will be applicable to a json response then xpath will be applicable to an xpath response then we have html assertion now here you can use this assertion so let me again go to assertions and we have html assertion now you can see in this assertion you can actually check the format so you can check the HTML format XHTML and HTML and then we have here the error threshold and the warning threshold so 
for example I say this error threshold as 100 and warning threshold as 200 so that will mean that in case the errors in the format of whatever format you select here is more than 100 or warning threshold is more than 200 or both then only it will be shown as failure otherwise it will pass it so that is about HTML assertion and then if you go to other assertions uh, let me go again uh, we have uh, XML assertion similarly you can check the XML uh, format or schema and then these are the two assertions which are script assertions so if you see here JSR233 and pin shell assertion so these are the script assertions so if I click here JSR233 assertion you can see here you can actually write a groovy script here so you can see there here we have uh, scripting language you can use bean shell javascript jxl and language you can use here is groovy java javascript and so on and you can actually write a script for your assertion and similarly is the bean shell assertion so you can write you have these scripts assertion that you can do scripting and we have already seen html and xml assertions for format and then there are many other assertions that we will see uh, in our later videos so that was all about assertions in Jmeter. I hope this was very useful for you. Thank you for watching.